Okay, this video is to support the 4347 JPA project, and we'll be going over setting up the project, testing, and export. First, um, we are going to assume that you have a MySQL server set up either on your local PC or on AWS, and we're also assuming that you have the MySQL workbench set up and configured to contact the server. First thing we'll do is import the two projects into uh, an Eclipse workspace. And so here I have a uh, brand new empty Eclipse workspace and I click on import and then I we go with existing project. Be sure that the second option is selected, not root directory, but archive file, very important. Browse to where you've downloaded the um, JPA project from uh, yeah from um, from eLearning and we'll go with the uh, student first and just go with the op all the options and now this archive is pretty large well, went quickly anyway. So we have the student project, and then we will import the testing project. You could also import the sample code if you want, but that's not part of the project. All right, we have the two projects set up. Now we have an error because we need to configure the build path to include the project. So we will go into select the testing project, build path, configured build path. Now you don't have this project, so we will remove it, add the student project, and the error is gone. Okay, so the project has been imported and is ready for you to complete the um, you'll need, well the material that we over, went over in class. This video is not to um, lecture the use of JPA. Okay, so in the next video we'll go over uh, testing. Okay, so uh, at this point we're going to set up and then test the project. Um, notice here that I have, here is the project testing, project for student, which you are to, uh, you should just install and will be completing. And then a third project you do not have, which is my completed version. And I will be testing against that as I don't feel like filling in the project for student and testing against the completed version there when I have my own version already. So just that keep that in mind. Don't be confused that I'm working against a project that you don't have. This is a completed version of the student project. All right. With that in mind, um, the first thing we need to do is we're going to go into the workbench and we're going to create a schema on the database. I know this sounds weird and let me correct that. We're going to create an empty schema on the server. Um, as we talked about in class, JPA Hibernate will create the schema, the tables, attributes, foreign keys, and so on, but it can't, for whatever reason, generate or create the initial empty schema. So we must do that manually. So here I am. I'm going to log into my AWS. No, I'm going to use my local host because it'll run much faster. Uh, I've already, I have tested the JPA implementation against the AWS, but it runs very slow uh, when you're populating the tables. So for the sake of the for the sake of this video, I'm just going to run against my local host. 
So it's connecting. And then I want to refresh to make sure I don't have it. So you'll notice there's no simple company. And I noticed there's an error here from when I was testing last time. So I need to, you need to use lowercase simple company. The case, it's case sensitive. Um, now, let me backtrack a second. It wouldn't be case sensitive on the PC, but if you're running an AWS and you're using uppercase schema name, simple company, then you would run into that up difficulty. So I'm going to use lowercase uh, on my PC and it would be mandatory to have lowercase schema name on AWS. Anyway, going to run it, refresh, and here we have simple company schema, but when we examine it, completely empty. Okay, so let me see, do I want to start a new section? Um, now again, of course, we're assuming that the schema, I'm sorry, that the Hibernate project is completed. Okay. Now we need to configure the um, so can we find it? We're going to and now in the student in the testing project, we're going to configure the JPA configuration file, and we're going to set the. Um, now I could have done this in an editor. I'm doing it in Eclipse. I could have done it in. Any editor. Okay, I already have it set for localhost. I believe this is my password here. So if you were using AWS, then just like when you were configuring the DB config properties file from the JPA or JDBC project, you had to insert your MySQL DNS name. In, in place of localhost, but I'm, like I said, I'm going to use localhost, so I'm leaving that alone. Set the password. Hopefully that will work. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, populate the da database. And so we're going to go into select the executable or the program populate tables this is just like before it's going to populate the tables uh, with default data and it is going to then populate the um, customer address uh, credit card purchase on uh, property um, products and then it will generate a thousand purchases um, now the thing to note that's different here is Again, we don't have any schema. We have no tables, attributes, nothing defined here. That will be generated automatically when the first time we access the tables, access the database, and that is going to be when we populate. So here we go, running as application and it's just doing its thing. Now you can review some of this and I believe it'll show you this, the SQL that's being generating the tables and I believe that's it. Now this would have run much much more slowly if we were accessing uh, an AWS server. Go back to um, Workbench, refresh and magically all of the tables have showed up with the correct row counts, all ready to go. No muss, no fuss. Okay, we're going to break that off here and we'll look at the testing in the uh, next section. Okay, in this section we're going to run the um, JUnit test against the um, schema and popular tables that were just generated, what we generated in the last section. The thing you'll notice, the big difference between this and the JDBC project, uh, 
is we do not have any DAO unit test. We have only three service tests where we're testing the customer persistence, uh, product persistence, and purchase persistence services. We do not test the DAOs because there are no DAOs. The DAOs are generated automatically by Hibernate using the annotations that we attached to the customer address, credit card, etc. entity classes. Okay, so no testing of uh, the DAOs because there are no DAOs. So basically it's going to run all three. Again, runs much more quickly because running against localhost, but you see they all passed, and so this project is ready to turn in. The next section we'll talk about how to um, demonstrate again, although I'm not sure this is necessary, how to export your project and then test against the jar file before submitting it. Okay, having successfully completed your student project and tested it, uh, we're ready to export your project as a jar file, library jar file, and then to uh, test against that. Uh, of course, the jar file will be what you'll submit for grading once it's all done. Again, don't um, be confused by the fact that my workspace has uh, a Java project project in it. Um, this is my completed project. Of course, you'll be exporting, working within, and exporting your student project. So just pretend this is my student project. And so let's export this as a jar. And so we'll do export. And then a little bit different under Java jar file, not the uh, workspace. Next, make sure your project is selected and then give it a name. HJPA and that's been it. And it will complain about warnings we don't care and there it is newly created so in order to test against the jar we will well, we do a couple different could do this differently let's do it this way first I'm going to go into and close my work project just to make sure there's no confusion so I won't delete it but I'll close the project now notice there's a error shows up in the testing project because we close the dependency. And the second thing we'll do before getting too further, I'm just going to copy my jar file into my testing project. This is how I will be testing. And copy. And notice now the files been copied into the workspace directory. Now let's configure the work uh, the build path, class path. So build path configure. So under projects, let's remove Hibernate project because we're not using it. Under libraries, add jar, and then project testing, lib, that project we just imported. And OK. All the errors go away. OK, let's test it. Let's, in fact, let's go crazy. Let's just do the whole test. Because it's so quick, we'll just do the whole testing cycle again. So we'll get back into our hmm, it appears I closed it work not workspace workbench I did close it right hmm. oh well all right again we're going to connect to localhost because it's much faster 
and we're going to remove the schema simple company drop it so that we can retest it from scratch drop the schema drop now again we're going to create an empty schema because JPA Hibernate can't create the initial empty schema so we'll run create in the script as you see here and refresh and there's simple company as we've noticed before no tables and then we'll go into the testing project now again we're running against our jar file source again we've modified our persistence config file to again under here the URL to with our URL this would be your AWS service or ID and password and then we'll go to populate table run as oops, run as application and it's doing its thing and you're welcome to look that over I believe it's finished so it, well, it ran off the top anyway finish so now we'll do the um, unit testing well no let's in workbench we'll refresh and we'll see we created the tables and they're populated and the columns and the I'm gonna make sure, let's see here the indexes yeah these were procedures events and so on anyway just out of curiosity Right, enough times okay so let's run the unit test again quickly and so go to unit test and I can just gonna select the whole package run as unit test and it's a switch over and it is done and so are we Um, so now you have your, and this is where I put it, you have your jar file ready to be submitted, and um, that's it. Good luck with it.